He just skillfully just puts in the batter, lets it cook. He knows the exact timings, and afterwards he'll just flip it over onto the tray so masterfully. He, he, he's really, he really knows what he's doing, and he, I'm sure he's been doing it for years. Oh, mm. oh yeah, that's like a little cake slash pancake slash waffle combination. Good morning guys, hope you're having a great day. It is Ping here. Today I'm in Yogyakarta, Indonesia and it is my last day here because uh, I'm actually flying out today, which means that since we have a couple hours here in Yogyakarta, it's time for our food tour. Let's go. It is a just a little shop along the road uh, called uh, Gudeg Mbalindu, which is made by this old lady, and she makes it very traditional style with charcoal cooked. Um, but it looks absolutely delicious, and there's already a very long line, so we are going to go queue up and wait for our food. Our food egg has arrived. Let's try it out. Let's go in with the rice first. Oh, this rice is so fluffy. Oh, that is very fluffy, fluffy rice. The flavor is not like um, too very coconutty, but the rice is very, very fluffy. Um, now we gotta go in for some of that. Um, Food egg, of course. Almost looks like pieces of um, beef, just string beef, all put together in some deliciously coated sauce. Oh yeah, they have such a meaty texture. And what I like about this place is that the gouda, I feel like, is a lot more sweeter. You can balance everything out with the um, spicy chilies. You can just see all the chilies that they put. sweet earlier but with that chili that just becomes the perfect combination mm. you can just see all the chili seeds across the whole plate so much chili so intense so fiery but it works so well because their food is sweeter it almost feels like the flavors here are more intense and therefore if something's sweeter the spiciness also has to be spicier so all the flavors are a lot stronger than I would expect from a good egg. Shout some of this uh, egg. Mmm. The egg yolk here is so much bigger that instead of absorbing the flavor of the outside of the egg, that sauce, the egg yolk itself still retains a very strong flavor. Go for some more tofu. I like about their tofu is that they dried it out completely. So this has become such a dry piece of tofu, it absorbs all the sauce that it's put into. And this tofu just absorbs the, all the spiciness, the sweetness, the saltiness of all the sauce. It's like, it's like if nasi gudeg was put into one bite, that's the bite. That was a delicious plate of gudeg. She's just an institution of this community. Everybody comes here early in the morning to get their gudeg share of breakfast. Um, but that was such a delicious plate of gudeg. Um, the total damage was 20,000 rupiah, which is like less than $2. So for all that rice and gudeg and everything, for less than $2, it's just a, an amazing deal. Now we are going to go get breakfast number two. This 
stall just outside the market and it's just a little street cart stall as you can see right there uh, the name of it is called Pookies and they're creating this like pancake waffle sort of combination and I think they have many different flavors so we're just gonna go try it out and see what this Pookies is He just skillfully just puts in the batter, lets it cook. He knows the exact timings and afterwards he'll just flip it over onto the tray so masterfully. He, he, he's really, he really knows what he's doing and he, I'm sure he's been doing it for years. But um, it's hot, it's fresh and we need to give this a try. First thing I notice about this is that it's very buttery and the reason it's so buttery is because after he takes it off the cooking griddle, he just lathers it in butter and it's just so delicious, so greasy. So let me just take out a piece here. Oh, these are hot. This is the green one. I think it's pandan, but let's give it a try. Oh, mm. oh. Mm. Oh yeah, that's like a little cake slash pancake slash waffle combination. The outside is crispy like a waffle. Inside is, it's not really like a pancake, it's a little bit tougher than a pancake. And uh, as you can see, it's just so floury on the inside, but it, it's delicious. And the best part is, because you put chocolate in the inner layer, you get this like chocolatey taste on the inside of uh, these cookies. But I think this one is a pandan one. It's, it's it's quite good. Mm. Oh yeah, this is delicious. And this is like a really local Yorkshire Garden snack. You don't see this on the main areas. You only find this in like the old local neighborhoods because this is a dying tree. So if you get the chance and you're in Yorkshire Garden, definitely try this out because you don't find this in many places in Yorkshire Garden anymore. Mm. Next up, we're gonna try the normal batter one. This one is just a yellowish normal batter color. It's not um, green, not pandan. But let's just see how this goes. Oh. Oh no. It's almost like the vanilla cake, pancake, waffle combination. Oh, this is so good. And these are very filling as well. And they only sell them in batches of 10. So if you're gonna buy any, you're gonna buy all 10 of them. But this is so good. It's so tasty. It's not too sweet. It's not overpowering. There's a the chocolate sprinkles just help to bring out that, that, just that hint of sweetness within the uh, entire cake. But this is just delicious. And uh, if you go, make sure to spend some time because it'll probably take a lot of time for you to order that because there's always a long line there. So he's very famous here and everybody comes here to get these cookies. We're gonna go ahead to our next stop now. We are back on Malioboro Street now, and we are going to have a very traditional dessert known as Es Dawet, which is basically like a Chendo but Indonesian style. So here it is right here. I've already mixed all the ingredients. Let's give this a try. Oh, 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 that's good. It's like, it's not just sweet, it's a little bit salty, actually quite salty. And um, they have some seeds, they have these like jelly things which add some texture. But the flavor is just surprising because it's it's more salty than it is sweet, which I, I was not expecting. But this is only about 5,000 rupiah. And for 5,000 rupiah, 
a big cup like this, not a bad deal, but that's just really salty. I mean, of course the sweet is more overpowering, but the amount of salt is just very surprising. And the reason it's salty is because it comes from the real coconut. So they're putting like um, the real coconut flavor in, which I guess uh, is quite good for such a drink. And it definitely gives you that uh, coconutty, creamy flavor that you want in an iced drink on a very hot day. place that creates bakya, which is a sort of uh, pastry that they have here. And they've let me come in and film them making it. So they're just making it into the different uh, shapes here of the bakya, which are the uh, different like uh, cakes that they have here. And uh, the yellow ones over there are cheese flavor. And here they're making uh, chocolate. They're just putting it into the mold. And after the mold, they get them ready. Uh, made it into these, all these trays of uh, bakya that are ready to be uh, cooked in the oven outside. But this is where most of the work is being done. They're just creating the bakya, stuffing it with whatever flavor it's supposed to be. So whether it's cheese or chocolate, uh, green tea is uh, one of the flavors I think it is. Um, but this is where they're doing all the work. So out here is where they bake these um, bakya. And as you can see, they're uh, just cooking it inside this oven, taking it out, and then they are shaking it and then putting it onto a plate so that it doesn't stick to the original plate and then make sure that once it's flipped over, they can put it back into the oven a second time so that the other side of the bakya becomes safe. But it's such an efficient method. It's like a whole factory. They're just creating batches and batches of bakya non-stop all day. First, the people inside will just wrap it up together. Then they'll just cook it here outside. It's such an efficient process. And then after they finish baking all of these bakyas and putting them into these big trays that are ready to be cut outside, they put them out here for uh, just, just a couple minutes just to let them dry off, cool down. And then once they're cool enough to be packaged, this guy over here will come and package all of these bakpias into the boxes. Now that we've seen them make it, it's time for us to try some. And they have all these different flavors that you can uh, try. They have uh, cheese, durian, jackfruit, chocolate, uh, green tea, all these different flavors. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to get, but uh, we're definitely going to try them after seeing them being made because it just smells so good. So I can't read Indonesian, but they do have like uh, samplers for you to try so you can know what flavor you're buying. Oh, these are hot. Oh my gosh. These are like just freshly made. Oh man. All right. Mm. Mm. Oh. oh, that is good. So I think the one I had was a green bean one, but it was like the first it was sweet as I expected. The wrapping is so thin and it's so flaky. And then afterwards the saltiness hit. And it took a while for the saltiness to kick in actually, but that is really good. Uh, the skin is just so thin. It's such a thin layer of wrapping. I don't know how it even holds it together. Uh, it's toasty, it's hot, and oh this is delicious. Oh, this is just too good. Mm. Bakya is absolutely amazing. That is delicious. It's so flaky. The flavor is so good inside. Absolutely have to come. Not only because it's good, but how they make the process is so interesting. And you can see them making the bakpia, so you know the ingredients going in. You know how they're making it. You know the baking process. And it's such an amazing experience to see them make something so delicious. But yeah, definitely this shop earlier. Um, as I've heard is one of the most famous in uh, the city. So if you do get a chance and you come and visit Jogjakarta, definitely go there to see how it's made and then try the samples because I'm telling you, you will be blown away by how good the bakya are.
We've made it back to the hotel safely. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I showed you guys some good gudeg, some uh, traditional snacks here in Jakarta. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos coming up. I will see you guys on the next travel video. Bye guys.